Hello, welcome back to Adventure All The Way. I'm Emma, a homeschooling mum of three in the UK. And today is Tuesday, which means it's homeschooling video day. Today I want to chat about different types of home education or homeschooling, um, specifically ones that are um, most common in the UK. And I have seven I want to talk to you about today. Um, we'll start off um, with a few different ones and then at the end we'll talk about the one that I specifically do with my children. You will have to excuse me though, because I've either got a cold coming or my allergies are playing up. I think it's allergies, but my Pyroton hasn't kicked in yet. So I may stop repeatedly to blow my nose or cough, so just bear with. Okay, so the first one I want to talk about might seem pretty obvious and it might not be some, but also might not be something you expect me to talk about when I'm talking about homeschooling or home education. And that's the national curriculum. Curriculum is easily accessible to home educators. In the same way that a non-specialised teacher can access books and things online, home educators can access them too. For example, the website Twinkle is full of primary and secondary resources that you can build a curriculum out of. And that's in line with the national curriculum. All of the workbooks that are available in the UK in WH Smith's, The Works, even Poundland are all aligned with the national curriculum. And by using a variety of different resources, you can follow the national curriculum just by the, you know, those workbooks. Might not be particularly fun, but you can do it. Um, lots of those workbooks then also have experiments you can do for science or, um, and then you you can use other resources available to teachers to um, facilitate art, history, PE, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm not gonna talk hugely about the national curriculum because I think it is, you know, everyone who has had a child in school knows about the national curriculum. Obviously your child has been following it when they've been in school. Um, and if you've, but if your child's not been in school, um, and you have, for example, you would have followed a national curriculum at some point. For example, I was educated at school um, and I was educated by the national curriculum at the time. Um, you can easily access um, very detailed information about it on the gov.uk website. Um, some of it is a little bit like, what? <laughs> um, especially if you're new to looking into education in this way. Um, I remember the first time I looked at the very detailed um, information that they give you for the national curriculum and I was a little bit mind blown it wasn't until I read other books and other articles and blogs and things like that from my home educators that I was able to make sense of it um I think that as someone who's not trained as a teacher you can look at the information some of the information that's given and be a bit like how on earth do you teach that and then it's not until you look at exercises in workbooks you're like oh right that's how you're teaching it and i know when i first started looking at it when charles was very little and i wasn't educating all the time um excuse me that um it was a little bit mind-blowing and a little overwhelming oh my gosh do i have to teach all of this and actually that's the beauty of home education is that you don't have to use the national curriculum um as much as some people might say that you do need to use the national curriculum it's really not your only option. If you choose to, that's fine, and your child will have a perfectly well-rounded education. But you don't have to. You can choose one of these other styles and still have a child who has a well-rounded education and can go on to, to achieve anything they want to achieve. So, the second one I want to talk about is project-based or unit studies. Now, I really like this, and it's one of the things that we use in, in our um, style of homeschooling. You can use unit studies to learn about a whole host of different things. So, for example, you could pick a topic that is seems very simple. The Romans, for example. But you can, you can encompass all of the subjects you want to learn within that. So, for example, cooking and life skills you can you can pick find roman recipes common roman foods you can do art you can do science you can do maths how many centurions are in this line and and you know if if there were 24 centurions and half of them left to join another regiment how many would be left and so on and so forth you can do these things um, and of course reading and spelling how do you spell amphitheater <laughs> you know there's there's lots of different ways to um encompass all subjects into unit studies um one of our favorite things to do is make a lap book and i will include that in another video at a later point because lap books are really fun um and basically we use paper document wallets we rip them well not rip them we cut them apart so they open like a big book 
excuse me, I know I'm constantly sniffing. Um, and and then we then we use them like a presentation booklet. So we'll have, um, so the Romans, for example, there will be um, things about their way of life. Um, my son will always choose, my eldest son, Charles, will always choose to pick, you know, centurions or some kind of war history because he's very interested in that sort of thing. Um, much like my husband and my dad actually um they were so he will always pick like oh how, how do the centurions live what did they wear where did they go um who did they meet that sort of thing uh, whereas my daughter is more likely to pick um how children were were being raised in roman times and and what toys did they play and how did they go to school and how did they dance and what what art did they what art did people enjoy and what food did they eat she's a lot more um interested in living history in that way um about the regular people um my personal first if i was choosing i would want to know about uh, roman gods and goddesses and i would want to know about um you know uh very important people so you know and how they lived especially the women so say you know caesar's wife and things like that like what were they getting up to but but you know you can encompass that into your project that everyone including yourself as their parent or carer can um can be learning something too and you can do your own lap book who says that it's just the kids who have to do lap books and unit studies you can do it too have fun learn alongside them that's what makes it so exciting so the third one I want to talk about is religious homeschooling. Now this isn't something I have a huge amount of expertise in because I am not one of the main religious groups. Um, most most people who are that I am aware of who are doing religious schooling are Christian homeschoolers. So they will have Bible study as a big part of their day. Obviously other religions I'm sure homeschool as well and make that a big part of their day. Um, I. <laughs> Seriously, she loves being in the videos, doesn't she? Hi, Jazz. Um, messing up my lighting. There we go. Um, it's not something that we do. We don't include Bible study or um, we do religious studies, but we don't include it as a, this is the gospel truth, um, to, if you'll excuse the pun. <laughs> um, we follow the wheel of the year. Um, so we will talk about that if we were doing any form of religious homeschooling I wouldn't class it as a religion as such because we're not um, like that it's more of a spiritualism for us excuse me um, so Bible study would be a big part of a Christian homeschoolers day and lots of curriculums um, allow for that and have that built in and um, a lot of the American curriculums that you can get um, will have Bible study as part of um, as part of the curriculum some of them even have it built in throughout all of their subjects so for example it's not something that I would use because I don't feel comfortable um, starting off my science for example or history with the creation story um, and not discussing evolution and other things like that because that's my personal belief system um, but if someone is um, subscribing to that belief system and they feel comfortable with that then there's a lot of homeschooling um, curriculums that um, that teach that um, belief system when it comes to science and um, history um, it's a very um, I don't want to say Christian washed but it, it, it is it's very um, it's very Christian centered and has all of their um, all of the beliefs, all of the stories are interwoven into every subject. Um, I can't speak for other religions when it comes to um, homeschooling and homeschool curriculums because I don't think it's readily available. Um, yeah, so it's not something that I have seen or searched for personally. If you know of any um, any resources that have um, Muslim homeschooling or Jewish homeschooling or Hindu homeschooling or anything like that then please let me know if you are one of the if you are in one of these religious groups and you are homeschooling and you are using your um, religion as a big part of your uh, curriculum and your day-to-day -day homeschooling please leave me a comment let's have a chat I would love to hear more about how you do that. Number four it's one of my favorites but not something that we we really prescribe to and that is charlotte mason i know a lot of people who follow charlotte mason's philosophy of teaching and uh, there's a lot of her, her things that i'm very interested in as well but it's not suited to my children specifically 
So Charlotte Mason is all about living books and is heavily centred on arts and nature. It's also Christian based, but unlike some curriculums, it's easily ignored. If you're not uh, not interested in that sort of thing, you you can very easily make it about the wheel of the year or make it about other um, other religions. So one of the things that Charlotte Mason um, believed in was that you shouldn't do big periods of study. So you shouldn't have an hour lesson, for example. Children who are primary school or elementary school age should only do 15 minutes in, a, in one go and then the rest of their time should be spent doing things um, like reading books and going on nature walks and generally being outside and having fun. Um, and then the, she allows a little bit more extra time for children who are of high school or senior school age. Um, but obviously once they get to that age sitting down and doing things is probably a bit more up their up their street than um than it is for a primary school or elementary school child i know my children who are in primary school one is um of key stage two age and one is key stage one and the other was is is pre at preschool um they would not be able to sit for any longer than 15 minutes and when they when i do try and make them sit for any longer than 15 minutes we end up spending three hours on something that should have only taken about half an hour personally i love this idea and i love that charlotte mason is Char charlotte Wait and i love that charlotte mason's philosophy is so popular because 15 minutes several times a day is better for our children than making them do it all in one go number five again this is not something i know a lot about mainly because we don't travel but that's world schooling we don't travel a huge amount one because i'm afraid of flying and three and two because we have three children who struggle with transitions and three because it's expensive <laughs> uh, we also have pets at home so traveling is not something that is a easy thing for us to do we can't just pick up and go because we have dogs and cats and horses and a gecko and fish and all these sorts of things but world schooling is fascinating to me. You can literally learn anything anywhere and think about the languages, the culture, the history and all of those things that you're going to be learning about whilst you're traveling the world or even just going to a single country. I know of one family who goes to a different country every month. Um, sounds absolutely horrific to me because I would not want to be traveling. Um, but it's also if it, all of that uh, culture that you're soaking up and all of the things within that culture must be so educational and um, I'd love to hear about it. If you are a world, world schooler, then please get in touch. I would love to hear about your travels. I love hearing about other people's travels, but I do not want to go on them myself. <laughs> Number six is unschooling or autonomous learning. Unschooling and autonomous learning is all based on the fact that you can trust your child to learn what they need to learn based on their environment. For example, they needed to learn to walk, so they did. They needed to learn to talk, so they did. They used, they learned to use the potty, they learned to eat with a knife and fork. All of these things are built into their environment they learned how to do, and that's the same thing. Eventually, if they are exposed to reading, they will learn to read. If they're exposed to writing, they will learn to write, and so on and so forth. There's lots of information about it, and there's a, um, a really good book that um, I will link below that talks about um, how to deal with common issues that unschoolers worry about or um, unschoolers often face um, with other people having opinions about the way they're doing it. Excuse me. Oh, tickly nose is driving me insane. Um, it's not something that we follow specifically, mainly because our three children are either on or likely on the autistic spectrum and they need a bit more routine. The lack of structure of unschooling just doesn't, isn't suited to our way of life and it isn't suited to the neurodiverse people in this house. However, I do know a lot of unschoolers who really, really love this and they can pick up and pick up doing different things and if their child's interested in doing a workbook then they do a workbook it's all about the child leading their education and um i guess we do pick up elements of that in ours because we do believe that the children should be largely responsible responsible for their education because at the end of the day it is their education and finally our style of homeschooling which is called eclectic homeschooling and it's literally what it says on the tin we pick and choose our favorite parts of all the different types of homeschooling that suits us and make it into a style that suits us in all uh, suits our individual family 
So for example, we use the National Curriculum for English, Maths and Science because we feel that this is the best choice for our children. But we also use different things that are Charlotte Mason based, for example, a nature study and the fact that our children don't do any more than 15 minutes at a time. We also spend a lot of time outside and we also do a lot of art. We also do a little bit of unschooling. For example, if the children wake up and they are really having a high anxiety day or low mood or incredibly hyperactive, we do no sit down learning. We go outside or we play and we learn and then we do and then the children do learning through play or they learn outside in a Charlotte Mason kind of way. So all of our so our style of homeschooling is a real mix between several different types. And this is what suits us best as a family with three neurodiverse children and two neurodiverse parents. Really, one size just doesn't fit all. For example, the national curriculum on its own would definitely not suit our three children. And it certainly didn't suit Philip and myself when we were at school. However, for me personally, I think that a Charlotte Mason style would have suited me personally as a child. And I imagine a um, whereas something like unschooling would have probably quite suited Philip. However, <laughs> I think it would have also meant that he didn't have a well-rounded education because he would have not picked any languages, he would have not picked to do any English, and he would have solely done maths and science. Um, maybe with a bit of PE thrown in just for fun. But uh, it's, uh, it would certainly have suited his personality better. Um, our children enjoy elements of the national curriculum. They also really enjoy project-based learning, um, which for us when they do project based learning it's project based about the things that they are particularly interested in so for example um, our history and geography curriculum is based on projects um, this year we are covering the world as a whole the united kingdom and then a joint project that charles and bessie have chosen which is china and australia we're splitting that project into two to encompass to uh, allow for the children to do what they want to do and our history is going to be toys and games uh, the stone age and the, the stone age and the iron age we will be doing project based learning for these three but this is also autonomous because the children have chosen our topic titles as you can see our style of homeschooling is very mixed between lots of different types and um but we wouldn't be classed as autonomous because we do make them do English, maths and science and we do make them do the national curriculum English, maths and science. Um, however, I also don't force them. I do say to them, this is the English and maths you have. This is the science you have. Let's get on with it. And if they choose not to, if they are very um, against the idea, then we don't do it. We do something else. But there is not another option for their English, maths and science. And I do like to tick off in my head each day. Um, if we haven't sat down and done workbooks, well, that can be covered as English, that's science, that's maths. And I have a checklist in my mind. Um, I also like them to do some art or something creative every single day because I feel that's very important, especially for my three children who are incredibly creative in their own different ways. Um, so we all have something that we like to do that's creative and it's something that's heavily encouraged by Philip and I all the time. So I hope you've enjoyed my little video about styles of homeschooling and I hope it's taught you something. I would love for you to teach me something. So if you have a different type of homeschooling that you use please get in touch and let me know i would love to do a video with you about what you do um, and if you're one of the ones that i don't have a lot of information about for example religious homeschooling or world schooling please please get in touch because i would love to learn more about the way that you home educate your children thank you so much for watching and i will see you on saturday for a lifestyle video and we are going to be doing back back to school clothes. We had an amazingly hilarious shopping trip to a local shopping centre and then we w went to a local park and took some really great pictures and videos of us all in our fancy new clothes and I can't wait to share them with you and hope that you might be able to pick out some too. I'll see you later!